Good afternoon. Good morning. This is Between the Lines Live. It's NuskyRegister.com and also at Facebook. Facebook, Facebook. Uh, and we're here today to talk about Heroes and Harlequins, a production at Harlequins Community Theater this Friday. Doors open at 6.30. Play starts at 7. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Dungeons and Dragons Live. And we're going to meet two of the actors and uh, Kate Volz, president of Harlequins, in just a moment. Before we do, I want to mention that Between the Lines is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors for Erie County residents age 60 and better. If you need help, call Serving Our Seniors at 419-624-627-1856. I think I got that right. Patrick Fanner, the news editor here at the Register, is producing this segment of Between the Lines. Patrick, you want to say hello? Hello. Patrick, do you know a lot about Dungeons and Dragons? Not as much as I should. I'm, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised. But let's meet Matt Hyman, Ray Sizemore, and Kate Volz from Harlequin's Theater. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having us. Good morning. Heroes and Harlequins. It's, it's a little bit suggestive. Is it meant to be that way? Uh, yes, I, I yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, tell us what you're doing. You're you're both in the play. You're among eight as is Kate actually. As is Kate actually. Oh, okay. All three I, I am also a super nerd. So yeah, <laughs> you are. Yes, I am. A super nerd. They make yeah. them, you know, all attractive to the eyes now. <laughs> <laughs> they don't all look like me. <laughs> oh my God, that is great. <laughs> uh, well, tell us a little bit about what this is. It's August twenty third. That's this Friday. It starts at seven p.m. Doors mm -hmm. open at six thirty. There's not a bad seat in the house, as no, we all know. True. Harlequin's Community Theater on uh, what street is that? I never Wayne remember. Street. Wayne Street, right at Adams Street. Pretty close, yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. The carriage house in the back. Mm -hmm. Beautiful theater. So what is tell us what this is about. Uh, it is a live improvised Dungeons and Dragons adventure. Um, uh, it's a storytelling game that takes place in a medieval fantasy world. Uh, full of dragons and monsters and witches and ogres, and goblins, and uh, I act as the dungeon master, the narrator of the story, as well as play the supplementary characters. And Kate and Ray and several other talented people play the cast of our little adventure, and they get into all sorts of madcap scrapes and we get, do that. get in tough jams and get out of them. And what what makes it special? Why why are you you, you love Dungeons and Dragons? Yes, I've loved and Dungeons and Dragons. Since I was a junior high teenager. A junior high teenager. And is it a nerd thing? I would say definitely. It's more popular now than uh, it's been in the past. Um, by far. Yes. I mean, it's been bigger now by far than it's ever been. It is. Oh, yeah. yeah. There are live streams every week where literally tens of thousands of people um, watch live people play D&D &D on the internet. A live D&D &D, uh, YouTube and Twitch show has the record for the most profitable Kickstarter of all time in film and media. How much are they, how many millions? 10 million. For an anim, for an anim, they wanted to make one animated short and their fan base was so big that they kickstarted $10 million. And an entire season. They made a whole, they're gonna make a whole wow. season of this. Yeah. I should have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> and is every show different? Yes, mm -hmm. every yeah. show is a, a self-contained adventure starring recurring characters. Um, so we check in on them at various points in their adventuring careers. And every show is made up on the spot for the most part. So um, no two shows are the same? No. Oh, no. no. And, and what is the general plot? Can you tell us a little bit about where it goes, how it starts out? Uh, well, this being our second show, we did one last month in July. Um, and that one, they uh, stopped a, a nefarious cult from uh, resurrecting an evil fire demon. Um, which uh, is lot, the adventure was a lot more fun and less nerdy than it sounds, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Um, and because the show is improvised, I don't think we could do it the same way twice if we wanted to. Mm -mm. Um, okay, everything right. is, everything is made up on the spot. We take suggestions from the audience on what things might be occurring in the story, or what people's names might be, what and, towns. They and might you're visit. the narrator. Yes, and the storyteller. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Ray, what roles do you play? Well, the rest of the cast, we all have characters. Okay. And <laughs> so my character, <laughs> I thought of this name uh, on a whim last year, uh, is a half-orc bard named Porkstorm. 
right, now, uh, <laughs> a, a half? A half orc. So an orc is sort of a um, green, traditionally depicted as green, kind of pig-like um, race in Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. And like back to Tolkien, that sort of thing. Okay. And uh, yeah, Porkstorm is a bard, which means in this case that he channels magic through his song. And his song is he chants while playing a war drum. Okay, so it's a, it's yeah. a, a musical. <laughs> well, there's, there's an element just every, whenever I cast a spell, I make up a little something on the spot. Um, play, I have a drum prop and I play the drum and his, his quirk is that he ends every, every song with his own name. He'll just duh, 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 cast a spell, duh, 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 pork storm. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm almost afraid to ask. Uh, She's but, much more normal. I, yeah, but what I, is your role? Um, I play Hazel, and she is a human rogue a, pirate. A rogue. So she's a pirate. She's a pirate. Mm -hmm. So she's got attitude. I, yeah, I do. I definitely have attitude. So does the character. Yes, yeah, so does the character. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Frank. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so Hazel Hazel has a lot of attitude, and she doesn't take anything from anybody. Um, her, well, she takes everything from everyone. Well, well I was gonna say, it's like her her biggest quirk is that she's a, she's a bit of a kleptomaniac. So anything that's uh, sparkly or shiny, I she will steal, and, ah. and she's really good at stealing. So so audience members should leave their jewelry at home. No, 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 just the character within the story. But the audience becomes part of the story. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In our first show, we had an audience member come up and basically tell us what the the problems that the cult was causing in the local community was. And, oh, and oh we my just gosh! Kind of take that what they give us, and we we turn that into the, the th we turn that into the third act of the story. Okay. Um, At one point, he asked for uh, the audience member to come up with a riddle to ask the party. <laughs> so we had to get past a certain obstacle, and uh, we had to answer the riddle they came up with. Porkstorm got the answer. Porkstorm. <laughs> yeah. Un unlike uh, I would say a traditional D and D game, the fun of this, uh, from my perspective, is that uh, I, I get to leave a lot of gaps in my preparation. And my preparation has gotten more and more minimal as time has gone, as we've kind of gotten ready for this, because normally I would have to figure out all the details. And now I just get to play, I get to set up a scenario and then play yes and with the audience. And follow and it. Let, and let, just let it follow. And through. then we have to try to go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, the, the cast is wonderful. Ray didn't mention uh, one of my favorite running bits he has, which is that uh, because Porkstorm is not native to the human lands, uh, a lot of his songs get messed up in translation yeah it's, it's just, yeah the songs don't make sense in the human he sings them in the common tongue of man but it doesn't in make the, sense in the common tongue of man yeah, yeah. to simplify things in dnd they don't say there's like english and french they just say hey if you're human or anything that looks like a human you speak the common tongue interesting interesting we're talking about heroes and harlequins this friday at uh harlequins community theater on Wayne Street, Got it. near Adams Street, the carriage house in the back. Uh, there's not a bad seat in the house. Doors open at 6.30. The play starts at 7 p.m. You can get tickets at the door. You can get tickets at the door. They're $10 at the door. You can also buy them online through Facebook or Eventbrite if you want to get them ahead of time. Okay. So is this, um, is, is Harlequins getting edgier? I don't know that Harlequins is getting edgier. This particular group is renting the space from Harlequins okay. in order to put this on. Um, so Harlequins is really just kind of the shell, the house that we're. Is Dungeons in. and Dragons edgy? Is that? Uh, it's kind of what you want it to be. It's kind of I, I've I've played I've played in games with six year olds. Um, okay. With uh, like my friends' kids, uh, a person I played Dungeons and Dragons with in my early days in junior high. Uh, him and his kids play a lot, and you know we play for them, and it's it's a very different game for them than it would be for like you know me and my friends on a Saturday night. Uh, but and that, are there rules? Are there are there rules? Well, this is just the, the the beginning of the rules, and there are like eleven books beyond this with more rules. And do you have to follow guidelines or rules? Well, or the guy suggestions. It's it's a, it's a framework. <laughs> What uh, happens if you stray? What are, well, the, the, there will be mad debates between the characters. Yeah. That's what will happen. Um, yeah, I think uh, the beauty of the game is that it can be what you want it to be. Uh, it's you can follow the rules as written, 
or you can make up your own rules. The game is fully open about that because ultimately the goal is just fun. Mm-hmm. They're, they're like uh, in, in Dungeons and Dragons, the one of my favorite th- aspects about it is that generally everybody wins. Okay. In terms of like, no one's competing with each other. No one's trying to outsmart each other in terms of uh, how they interact. Everybody is working together on this on this story essentially, and it's the satisfaction of telling a good story that makes the game so enjoyable. Okay. Um, I, th- uh, I, I think anyone who's played D- D&D for a long time has had weird emotional moments. Um, they've actually done studies where the parts of your brain that you use when creating Dungeons & Dragons uh, has a lot to do with imagination, but also has a lot to do with like memories. Mm-hmm. And uh, in terms of the way your brain processes the experiences you have in a Dungeons & Dragons game, uh, it, it's stored in the same place as memories. So the fun part is when you're talking with your friends afterwards, you say things like, remember that time we fought that dragon? Mm-hmm. You don't say, remember the time we played the characters that fought the dragon? You just did that. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it emotionally impacts you that way. And so I, you know, in the I'm, audience as well? I think so. We, yeah. we were surprised to have our audience cheering yeah. and, and jeering and sighing and crying. We, we were encouraging that, mind you. <laughs> sure. You know, I did, we have one of the things that we do is we've got these uh, on screen graphics to like display character information. We got screen set up. Um, and Matt gave an introduction, and part of the introduction we included was hey, make some noise. You know, if you, something's cool, cheer if something's funny laugh we don't want you just sitting on your hands out there mm-hmm. all right all right we're talking about heroes and harlequins harlequins at the harlequins theater community theater in sandusky on friday doors open at 6 30 mm-hmm. uh it starts at uh, 7 p.m and it's an audience participation dungeons and dragons presentation mm-hmm. did you want to give an example of did you want to like improvise? Have you improvised? Yeah. Before? Oh yeah. We could improvise yeah, something. Do it. Let's yeah. Do it. All right. All right. Focus get this on man a D twenty. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're gonna give you the essential equipment. Got my little box here, and this is the engine. The whole thing runs on is twenty sided dice. Okay. So, uh, what would you say your biggest strength is? It would be physical strength. Would it be your dexterity, your charisma, your intelligence? Well, it would have to be my charisma. I would agree. I, I was going to say go charisma. That. So <laughs> just for the sake of saying, we're going to say that your character has a plus four in charisma. Okay. So uh, all these people out here, they're, they, they, need, they know they need to go to the show, and we need your help to convince okay. them. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you roll this 20-sided die, and we're going to determine how charismatic... You've been. It's a natural one. Oh, oh no! This is not <laughs> critical fail. That <laughs> is the worst you can possibly. So, roll in the engine game. of Dungeons and Dragons, when you roll a one or a twenty, a one is an automatic failure, and a twenty is an automatic success. At least in the way we play. Right. And so, is uh, that in this book though? There is. There are rules for that in this book, but it's an optional rule. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, what so, does it mean? I have so no you charisma. Would, you would add plus four to that. And what this would mean in this particular scenario would be that your character was trying to be charismatic, but you just kind of stumbled over your words and you maybe said the wrong thing. So, well, yeah, that, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> and then all these people kind of start walking away from you. Right. And you have to salvage the situation okay. somehow. And Jeff, the goblin on stilts, comes over and throws you out of the bar. <laughs> all right. All right. Again, it's, it's uh, Heroes and Harlequins. Mm-hmm. Uh, this Friday, doors open at 630 uh, and the play starts at seven. Is it a play? Is it? it it's a like production. It's like a production theater is of the, a fair yeah, show. Theater of the mind. Mm-hmm. Like so we, we are, we are not physically acting so much as we are kind of voice acting and describing things. But it's it's a production. It's not a play. There's no script. Right. Um, although Matt has some ideas where things might go. We don't know going in what he's going to confront us with. And so for, all, and for all I know, they're going to change whatever I have the second we start. So you playing. never know what's going to happen. It's this <laughs> Friday, beginning at 7 o'clock at yeah. Harlequin's Theater on um, Adams. Wayne Street. Wayne and Adams. <laughs> Two things House. that I do want to mention. Woo! One thing yes. is we do have just a, a warning, anyone 13 and over, um, just use or, your discretion with it. it. It's Again, it's completely... 
one like almost sure. 100 improv improvised so there's a lot of adult actors on stage so you might have a word that slips sure. out that people might not like that, so, that they never heard yeah you know so 13 and over is kind okay. of our thing but you know use your judgment on that the other thing is it's a ten dollar fee to get in but that includes snacks and drinks and a free poster to take home at the end very good and there's yeah. not a bad seat in the house yeah. we throw out prizes yeah and we're also uh this time we're putting together trading cards for the characters mm -hmm. As with some of those will be given away and we're putting together some of the characters magic item descriptions which if you come to the show you could take home and use in your own game very good and that's a that's a huge part of this is we're trying to definitely uh not only increase the number of players out there but increase the amount of people who feel like they can do it because i know with rule books like this it they're can be intimidating in, yeah yes. it can be intimidating and once you realize that the game is essentially uh, whatever you want it to be, and you can literally boil it down to just this one dice for for whether you succeed or fail, and that that is the game. Well, good luck on Friday. Did we cover everything we needed to cover? Yeah, I think so. I think the only other thing that I want to say is come to the show if, one, you love Dungeons & Dragons. Yes. If you've never heard of Dungeons & Dragons, if you've always wondered what Dungeons & Dragons is, this is the perfect way to get an introduction to it. And there's not a bad seat in the house. Not a bad seat in the house. You can get tickets at the door. Or you can go to Even Bright events. Event Bright or Events Bright. Or through our Facebook page, Heroes and Harlequins. Very good. Um, Matt Hyman, Ray Sizemore, and Kate Foltz, thank you for being on Between the Lines today. Thank, thank you, you so for much us. for having us. You're welcome. That's it for this segment of Between the Lines at SandusskyRegister.com. <laughs>